There was no possibility of taking a walk that day. The cold winter wind had brought with it clouds so sombre and a rain so penetrating that further outdoor exercise was out of the question. I was glad of it. I never liked long walks, especially on chilly afternoons. John, dear, just one to start with. And one for you, Georgiana. Oh, thank you, Mama. And one for my darling Eliza. Thank you, Mama. Thank you. You are hungry after your play. Bessie, why did you let them stay out so late? A minute more and they would have been caught in the rain. Well, it was that Jane, Mum. I called and called, but she'd gone off on her own and I couldn't find her anywhere. Of course. You may go, Bessie. Yes. What does Bessie say I have done, Aunt Reed? A child must not take up her elders. Until you can speak pleasantly, remain silent. Boo! Where the dickens is she? Lizzie? Georgie? Jane is not here. Tell Mama she has run out in the rain. Bad animal. What do you want? What do you want what? What do you want, cousin? Cousin? Starveling cousin. Orphan cousin. Call me Master Reed. I want you to come here. That's for your impotence to Mama and me your sneaking ways, getting behind curtains, you rat. What were you doing behind the curtain? I was reading. Show the book. You have no business to take our books. You are dependent. Mama says you have no money. I'll teach you. Wicked boy! You never stop bullying me! You are yes. a murderer! You are yes. a slave driver! <laughs> Ma! You're like the Roman Emperor oh, Jane! No! Oh, it's just here! Oh, dear. Dear. Oh, if you had heard you? what she'd said to me. Did anybody see such a picture of passion? <clears throat> Abbott, Bessie, take her to the Red Room and lock her in there. No! No! Oh. than a servant, for you do nothing for your keep. Now, sit down here and think over your wicked. Now, if you don't sit still, we shall have to tie your hands. Lend me your garters, Miss Abbott, for she'd break mine directly. Don't tie me up. I won't, sir. I promise. Well, mind you don't. Oh, she never did so before. No, but it was always in her. I've said so to Mrs. before, and Mrs. agreed with me. Oh, she's an underhand little thing. You ought to be aware, miss, that you are under obligations to Mrs. Reed. If she were to turn you out, you'd have to go to the poorhouse. Her dear dead husband only took you in because he was your mother's brother. So just you think of, Miss Eyre. You mustn't leave me in here. My uncle died in that bed. I try to do my duty, but I'm always punished. It's only because I'm different. I'm different from you all and you won't forgive me. Come, Bessie, we will leave her. I wouldn't have her art for anything. Aye. But the ghost! Say your prayers, child. If you don't repent, it will come down chimney and fetch you away. It's unjust! Unjust! Let me out! Let me out! Please!
You silly child. That was Ruddock the gardener. I saw him crossing the lawn with a lantern. I thought it was my uncle. You screamed out on purpose. I know your naughty tricks. What is all this? Abbott? Bessie, I believe I left orders that Jane Eyre should be locked in the Red Room till I came to her myself. Miss Jane screamed so loud, ma'am. Let her go. Child, release Bessie's hand. You cannot succeed in getting out by these means. I abhor artifice, particularly in children. It is my duty to show you that tricks will not answer. You will now stay here an hour longer. <laughs> and it is only on condition of perfect submission and stillness that I shall liberate you then. Oh, Aunt, let me be punished some other way. I cannot endure it. I shall be killed if I... Silence! This violence is almost repulsive. Go, and never disobey me again. Aunt Reed, please. Good morning, Miss Eyre. Good morning. Well, who am I? Mr. Lloyd, the physician. I... I was in that room. The missus said I could let you out. You were that quiet. I thought you were dead when I saw you. Could you eat a little now? No, thank you. Could you sleep some more? Yes. Oh. Then I shall get some rest too, for I've been up all night with you. I had Sarah from kitchen for company. I was that frightened you might die. What is the matter with me? Am I ill? You felt sick in Red Room. We're crying, I suppose. You'll soon be better. Don't try to talk just now. I wonder if she did see something. Missy were rather too hard with you. Well, never mind that now. We'd leave Jane to sleep. Now, plenty of sleep, Miss Eyre, and I'll call back and see you again this afternoon. Thank you. Over the days that we went tripsing a long time ago. Over the days that we went tripsing a long time ago. Come, Miss Jean, don't cry. Have a bit of tart. I cannot. Please forgive me, Bessie. Perhaps later. <sighs> Doctor's here, Bessie. And it's dinner time. What? Already up? <laughs> well, nurse, how is she? Well, she's doing very well, except she won't eat. Oh, she will when she's hungry. If you are well, you should look more cheerful. <laughs> Come here, Jane. Your name is Jane, is it not? Yes, sir. Well, Miss Jane Eyre, you've been crying. Can you tell me what about? Are you in pain? No, sir. Oh, I dare say she was crying because she could not go out with Mrs. in carriage. I never cried for such a thing in my life. I hate going out in the carriage. I cry because I am miserable. Oh, fie, miss. Well, Jane, what made you ill last night? She had a fall. Fall? Well, that's like a baby again. You can walk at your age. I was knocked down, but that didn't make me ill. Oh, that will be for you, nurse. Go for your dinner. Well, 
Jane. The fall didn't make you ill. What did then? I was shut up in a room where there was a ghost till after dark. Ghost? What you are, a baby, after all. <laughs> You're afraid of ghosts? Of Mr. Reed's ghost, I am. They told me something about a gardener, but Mr. Reed died in that room. No one would go into it at night. It was cruel to shut me up in it without a candle. So cruel that I should never forget it. Are you afraid now, in daylight? No, but night will come again soon. And besides, I am unhappy, very unhappy, for other things. What other things? Could you tell me some of them? Well, for one thing, I have no mother or father, brothers or sisters. You have a kind aunt and cousins. But John Reed knocked me down, and my aunt shut me up in the red room. Don't you think Gateshead Hall is a beautiful house? Are you not indeed thankful to have such a fine place to live at? It's not my house, sir. Abbott says I have less right to be here than a servant. Oh, fool. You can't be silly enough to want to leave such a splendid place. Why not? My aunt wouldn't have kept me here if my uncle hadn't made her promise in his last moments. I should be glad to leave it, if there was anywhere else to go. But I can never leave Gateshead till I'm a woman. Perhaps you may. Who knows? Would you like to go to school? I should indeed like to go to school. Well, who knows what may happen? <laughs> ah, Mrs. Reed is back, I see. Uh, Mrs. is back, sir. Yes, I would like to speak to her before I go. She's in breakfast room. Will you come with me, sir? Thank you. Goodbye, Jane. And if I don't see you again, remember, I've not forgotten you. My discourse with Mr. Lloyd awakened hope in me. But days and weeks passed, and there was nothing new from Aunt Reed, except that she now kept me and her own children apart even more than ever. My only comfort was from books. Caught you again stealing my books. I'm not stealing. I'm borrowing. And they're not yours. They will be. All this house will be mine one day, and I'll have the right to punish you. <coughs> Mama! 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 Mama, it was that nasty Jane Eyre. She flew at me like a wildcat. Don't talk to me about her, John. I told you not to go near her. She's not worthy of notice. I do not choose that either you or your sisters should associate with her. They are not fit to associate with me. Why, you... you dare rise from that place or utter one syllable for the rest of the day what would uncle reed say to you if he were alive what my uncle reed is in heaven and can see all you do and think and so can my mama and papa they know how you shut me up all day and wish me dead <sighs> Without a doubt, Miss Jane, you're the most wicked and abandoned child ever reared under a roof. Bessie! You eat, Miss Jane? Yes, Bessie. I brought you some nice gingerbread. Eat it up now. I shan't stir till you have. That supper she sent you up wasn't enough to feed a mouse. Would you like some more gingerbread or, or some bread and butter? No, this is all I want, thank you. Now be a good girl and go to sleep. Good night, Miss Jane. Good night, Bessie. Miss 
Jane, take off your pinafore. Have you washed your hands and face? Of course. Well, hurry when you're told you're a troublesome child. Go down directly. You want it in drawing room. This is the little girl respecting whom I applied to you. Her size is small. What is her age? Ten years. So much. Your name, little girl? Jane Eyre, sir. Well, Jane Eyre, and are you a good child? Perhaps the less said on that subject, the better, Mr. Brocklehurst. I am sorry indeed to hear it. No sight so sad as that of a naughty child, especially a naughty girl. Do you know where the wicked go after death? They go to hell. And what is hell? Can you tell me that? A pit full of fire. And should you like to fall into that pit and be burning there forever? No, sir. What must you do to avoid it? I must keep in good health and not die. How can you keep in good health? Children younger than you die daily. I buried a little child of five years old, only a day or two since. A good little child whose soul is now in heaven. It is to be feared that the same could not be said of you, were you called hence. I hope that sigh is from the heart, and that you repent of having been the occasion of discomfort to your excellent benefactress. Do you say your prayers night and morning? Yes, sir. Do you read your Bible? Sometimes. With pleasure? Are you fond of it? Bits of it. Bits of it. Shocking. I have a little boy, younger than you, who knows six psalms by heart and much else. When you ask him whether he would rather have a gingerbread nut or learn a psalm, he says, oh, a psalm to learn. Angels sing psalms, and I wish to be a little angel here below. He then gets two nuts as reward for his piety. But Psalms are not interesting. That proves you have a wicked heart. And you must pray to God to change it. You may sit down, Jane. Mr. Brocklehurst, I believe I intimated to you in my letter that this girl's disposition and character is not quite what I could wish, should you admit her into Lowell School. Be silent, child. Should you consent to do so, Mr. Brocklehurst, I would be glad if the superintendent and teachers were requested to keep a strict eye upon her, and above all, to guard against her worst fault, a tendency to deceit. I mention this in your hearing, Jane, that you may not attempt to impose on Mr. Brocklehurst. Deceit is indeed a sad fault in a child. It is akin to falsehood. And all liars will have their portion in the lake burning with fire and brimstone. Amen. She shall, however, be watched, Mrs. Reed. I will speak to my headmistress, Miss Temple, and to the teachers. I should wish her brought up in a manner suiting her prospects, to be made useful and humble. With your permission, she will spend all her vacations at Lowood. You will not be burdened with her again, Mrs. Reed. Uh, as to your wishes, I assure you that the pupils at Lowood are taught humility as a Christian grace, and that worldly pride must be mortified. That is a state of things I quite approve. Plain food, simple attire, hardy accommodation, and constant activity. 
Such is the order of the day at Lowood. Quite right, sir. I may depend upon your receiving this child, then, as a pupil. Madam, you may. And I trust she will show herself grateful for the privilege. I will send her to you, then, as soon as possible. Mm, of course. I shall write and tell Miss Temple to expect a new girl. And I must bid you good morning. May I? I shall return to Brocklehurst Hall in a week or so. I'm staying with my good friend, the Archdeacon, and he will not permit me to leave him sooner. Uh, I'll see that my carriage is ready. Goodbye, Mrs. Reed. Goodbye, Mr. Brocklehurst. Remember me to Mrs. and Miss Brocklehurst, and Augusta and Theodore, and Master Broughton Brocklehurst. I would indeed. Mm. Here is a book entitled The Child's Guide. Read it with prayer, especially the account of the torments inflicted in hell upon deceitful children. You may leave her in our hands. There will be no softness. You will return to your room. I should say I loved you, but I declare I do not love you. I dislike you the worst of anyone in the world except John Reed. And this book about the liar, you may give it to your girl Georgiana. She's the one who tells lies and not I. What more have you to say? I'm glad you are no relation of mine. I will never call you aunt again as long as I live. I will never come to see you when I'm grown up. And if anyone asks me how I liked you and how you treated me, I'll say the very thought of you makes me sick and that you treat me with miserable cruelty. How dare you affirm that, Jane Eyre? How dare I, Mrs. Reed? Because it is the truth. You think I have no feelings and can do without one bit of love or kindness, but I cannot live so. You have no pity. People think you are a good woman, but you are bad and hard-hearted. You are deceitful. You are under a mistake. Well, what is the matter with you? Why do you tremble so violently? Would you like a drink of water? No, Mrs. Reed. Is there anything else you wish for, Jane? I desire to be your friend. You do not. You told Mr. Brocklehurst I had a bad character. I'll tell everybody what you are. Jane, you do not understand about these things. Children must be corrected for their faults. Deceit is not my fault. Oh, but you are passionate, Jane. That you must allow. Oh, return to your room, Jane. There's a dear. And, and lie down a little. I am not your dear. Send me to school, Mrs. Reed, for I hate to live here. Fred will take you to where the coach stops and wait with you. I wish I could come, but Mrs. won't let me. What did you expect? You would not even bid her goodbye. No. That was wrong, Miss Jane. I was quite right, Bessie. Oh, you sharp little thing. You've got a new way of talking. What makes you so venturesome? I shall be away from you soon. Oh, so you're glad to leave me. You're not afraid of me, are you? I don't think I shall ever be afraid of you again. Because I've got used to you. And I will soon have another set of people to dread. If you dread them, they'll dislike you. As you do, Bessie? I don't dislike you, miss. In fact, I'm fonder of you than all the others. I dare say if I were to ask you for a kiss, you wouldn't give it me. I'll kiss you and welcome. Bend your head down. Oh. <laughs> Off you go now. Goodbye, dear Bessie. And goodbye, Gateshead. You may leave her in our hands. There will be no softness. 